If you've been gardening for any amount of time, you've probably heard this one golden rule repeated over and over. Compost is king. For decades, composting has been hailed as the holy grail of organic gardening, the ultimate way to recycle waste into black gold for your soil. But here's the surprising truth. Composting is not always the best method for building long-term soil fertility. In fact, there are smarter, more effective, and easier ways to boost soil health while saving time and keeping nutrients where they belong, right in the ground, feeding your plants. This may challenge what you've been taught, but if you stick with me, you'll discover how composting really works, its hidden drawbacks, and why alternatives like mulching, nutrient trenches, and microbial solutions can actually outperform traditional compost piles. Whether you're a backyard gardener or working on larger plots, this guide will give you fresh, science-backed methods to help you grow healthier crops and stronger soil ecosystems. Composting is basically controlled decomposition. You pile up organic matter like kitchen scraps, grass clippings, leaves, or manure, and let microbes break it down into a stable, humus-like substance we call compost. Sounds simple, right? But here's the catch. The process takes place outside the soil, which means plants and soil organisms don't benefit until much later. To make compost efficiently, the mix needs a perfect balance of carbon and nitrogen. That's often described as the brown to green ratio, ideally around 25 to 30 parts carbon to one part nitrogen. Leaves, straw, and wood chips supply carbon, while grass, food scraps, and manure supply nitrogen. Get it wrong, and your pile either rots and smells foul from excess nitrogen or sits there barely decomposing because it's too carbon heavy. The pile also needs about 50 to 60% moisture, similar to a wrung out sponge. Too dry and the microbes go dormant, too wet and it turns anaerobic, producing toxic byproducts instead of healthy compost. Oxygen is equally crucial, which is why gardeners are told to turn the pile. Without oxygen, the material ferments and produces methane, which is harmful for both your soil and the atmosphere. Hot composting, the method many gardeners strive for, reaches temperatures of 120 to 160 degrees Fahrenheit, or about 50 to 70 degrees Celsius. That's hot enough to kill pathogens and weed seeds, which is a plus. But here's the overlooked problem. Those same high temperatures also kill beneficial microbes, fungi, and organisms your soil desperately needs. Once the compost cools, it has to be recolonized by life before it becomes truly beneficial again. Cold composting avoids this loss, but it takes years, two to three in most cases, to produce mature compost. By then, many of the nutrients, especially nitrogen, have already escaped into the air as gases or washed away with rain. This may sound shocking, but compost piles are not natural. In a healthy ecosystem, organic matter doesn't sit in giant heaps away from living roots. Instead, leaves, stems, and organic debris fall directly onto the soil, where fungi, bacteria, earthworms, and plant roots interact with it instantly. Nothing is wasted, and nutrients cycle directly back into the system. When you compost outside the soil, you interrupt this cycle. Valuable carbon and nitrogen are lost during the process. Fungal networks that connect with plant roots, mycorrhizae, never even get a chance to develop in a compost pile. By the time compost is ready, it's often more of a diluted fertilizer than a living ecosystem booster. That doesn't mean compost is bad, it's still far better than chemical fertilizers, but it's not the ultimate solution many believe it to be. One of the biggest issues is going anaerobic. A pile that's too compacted or too wet turns into a slimy, smelly mess. This doesn't produce good compost. It produces toxins that can harm soil life. Another mistake is overloading with nitrogen-rich materials like fresh grass clippings or manure. This makes the pile overheat driving off nitrogen as gas, which means you lose the very nutrient your plants need most. Plastic compost bins, often marketed as beginner-friendly, are another trap. They restrict airflow and dry out quickly unless watered regularly, which stops decomposition in its tracks. On the other end of the spectrum, adding diseased plants or weed seeds without getting the pile hot enough just spreads problems back into your garden later. If composting isn't the most efficient way to build healthy soil, 
what should we be doing instead? The answer is simple. Mimic nature. Plants and soil organisms evolved to work with organic matter as it breaks down right in place, not after years in a separate pile. One of the best methods is mulching. Instead of throwing away leaves, straw, or garden residues, use them as a natural soil cover. A thick layer of organic mulch keeps soil cool, prevents moisture loss, and decomposes slowly, releasing nutrients directly into the root zone. Unlike compost, mulch feeds soil organisms continuously while protecting them from harsh conditions. Another highly effective option is nutrient trenches. This technique involves digging shallow trenches between rows of crops, filling them with kitchen scraps, prunings, or other organic material, and covering them with soil. The buried material decomposes right in the root zone, creating a constant nutrient source and attracting worms and microbes. This method locks in nutrients that would otherwise escape into the air in a compost pile. For those who want an extra microbial punch, Fermented preparations can make a huge difference. Compost teas or microbial brews introduce billions of beneficial bacteria and fungi directly into the soil. For example, a simple recipe is to mix one part well-matured compost with 10 parts non-chlorinated water, stir or aerate for 24 to 36 hours, and then dilute further to about 1 to 10 with water before applying to soil or as a foliar spray. A 5-gallon bucket of finished compost tea can cover a medium-sized garden, instantly boosting microbial activity and nutrient cycling. None of this means composting has no place in gardening. In fact, composting remains highly valuable in certain contexts. If you need a quick way to handle large volumes of organic waste, a compost pile is far more manageable than, you know, scattering it all around your garden. And if you want to kill weed seeds, pathogens, or deal with waste like animal manure, hot composting can be the safest route. On degraded soils, adding a layer of compost can really jumpstart fertility. And for mushroom cultivation or creating a sterile medium for seedlings, compost is still a, uh, useful substrate. The key is not to see it as the end goal, but as one tool among many for soil improvement. So what should you do as a gardener who wants truly fertile soil and thriving crops? Well, the answer really depends on your goals and your conditions. If you're short on time and want a low-maintenance approach, mulching is a game-changer. It takes just minutes to spread a layer of leaves, straw, or wood chips, yet the benefits honestly last all season. If you have heavy feeders like corn tomatoes or squash, nutrient trenches can provide the deep, consistent feeding they crave. And if your soil feels tired or lifeless, a few applications of compost tea or microbial brews can bring it back to life far quicker than waiting for a compost pile to mature. Compost can still be part of your system, especially if you have waste that needs safe processing. But really, the smartest approach is to combine these methods, leaning more on in-soil decomposition and microbial activity than on external piles. Composting has earned its reputation for good reason, but honestly it's not the miracle solution it's often made out to be. When we look closely we see that nature already provides better models for recycling organic matter and building soil fertility. By mulching, trenching and using microbial teas, we can keep nutrients in the soil where they belong, support the underground life that plants depend on, and grow crops that are not just abundant, but resilient and nutrient-dense. So next time you think about building another compost pile, ask yourself, is there a smarter way to let nature do the work for me? The answer, more often than not, is yes. If you found this guide helpful, don't forget to hit subscribe to Soil and Crop Central and share this with a fellow gardener. Together, let's grow healthier soil, stronger crops, and a better future for our gardens.